Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In case you are interested in my book, you can buy it from the link provided in the description box. In this video, I am going to show you how to implement convolutional RNN for a problem like captcha recognition. Recently, a very good data scientist and also a good friend Akash Nan published a tutorial on captcha recognition. This tutorial was in TensorFlow Keras. And I have added a link to it in the description box along with LinkedIn and Twitter handle of Akash. So you can go and get in touch with him. It's very helpful. And the tutorial I'm going to present today is heavily inspired by this tutorial, except the fact that I'm going to do it in PyTorch and a bit differently. And I will tell you what the difference is. So let's get started. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get some data. So this is the tutorial by Akash. So you can go and take a look here. So he has already upload, uploaded the data on his uh, GitHub repo. So what we are going to do, we are going to use the same data first of all. So uh, let's go to the input folder and we can just grab the data here. So, uh, okay, this is this copy paste does not doesn't seem to work. Okay, it's working now. So the data set is very small, uh, so it's not going to take you any time. And now let's unzip it. So we have all the images in this captcha images v2 folder. And now we go back and see what, what else we have. We have one folder called SRC, which is empty as of now. So let's go fill it up. <laughs> um, the first thing we always create is a config file. So some things are going to remain the same as previous videos, but some things are going to be very different. And that's why we are here to learn something new. So inside the input folder, all my images are in captcha underscore images underscore v2. So I'm just going to say this is my data directory. And then what else do we need? We need batch size. So let's say the batch size is eight. I think Akash use a batch size of 16. Uh, image width, let's say the image width is 300. Okay. And we also need size of the, uh, sorry, height of the image. Let's make it 75. Okay, and uh, then we have other things like the number of workers. So that depends on your machine. I'm putting it to 8. And then you have epochs. Epochs, I don't know, 200. And device. Which device you want to train on. So I'm just going to say CUDA. So we have these few things. And um, that's your config file. And if you look at the input, so input is not very different um, than what we used to have for other problems. So except a few minor things. So these are the PNG images that you have. And um, the, the file name is the label. So DBFEN is the DBF. So if you're not, not familiar with CAPTCHA, just you, I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with CAPTCHA and they have encountered it somewhere online. Uh, so this is a CAPTCHA image and then you have to type the characters inside this to verify that it's a human. So today we are going to build a deep neural network which can identify CAPTCHA for us. So we got the config and now the other thing that we need uh, is the data loader or uh, not the data loader but data set so let's create a data set dot by and inside this uh, so some of the things that we always use are going to remain the same so uh, we will use alimentation for uh, augmentations we will use torch um, we will use numpy um, we will use PIL to uh, read the image 
and we also need from pil import image file and we just set one uh, config for image file image file dot load truncated images to true so in case you have truncated images they should also be loaded and we should not forget about them uh, otherwise it's going to throw you an error so it happens from time to time so i will i will now write a uh, class called classification data set because it is indeed a classification problem in which you have these captcha images and uh, you have to predict the different characters so def init function so inside that you have a few things like image paths so the path to different images which is a list and then you have targets right do you need anything else here so maybe let's say we want to resize the image uh, to a fixed value that we specified in config file so you can have resize to set to none by default so you have self dot image paths now which is image paths then you have self dot targets which is your targets and then you have self dot resize which is same as resize and then the length of the this data set that you have to return using the length function is nothing but the length of image paths return length of self dot image paths okay so we have this and now we need to write the get item function so this is a bit different from how it's done in Kira's tutorial so we have the get item uh, function and self and item item is the item index that you want so now we read the image so our image will be image dot image dot open and then uh, here you specify the path to the image so yourself dot uh, image paths has the path already um, so item and that's it right so this will read the image for you but when you read this image you will find out that it's a four channel image it has an alpha channel so what we are going to do is we are just going to add convert dot convert rgb so now we get rgb image and our targets is self dot targets and item this becomes our um, targets so now we have we have the target we have the image now we what we want to do is we want to write a simple uh, augmentation so you can also um, add more augmentations to it but what i'm going to use this for is something very simple so uh, inside this we can add a list of different augmentations but i'm going to add only one thing uh, normalize and keeping the mean and uh, standard deviation same max pixel value same and always apply to true okay so one thing i don't understand like uh, these augmentations have always apply parameter and also have the probability parameter set to one i don't know what the difference is uh, probably i need to take a look and figure it out someday um so now you have uh, you have this augmentation so i can say image convert the image to a numpy array and apply the augmentation so um i i should not write it here i should have it outside uh, this function it will save some space right so i can write it here instead okay mm, now we converted image to array so we also have the resize parameter so let's say if self dot resize is not none then you want to resize so how we are going to use the resize is resize is a tuple of height and width that's how we are going to use it so we can write images image dot resize and inside that we have um 
when we are using PIL, PIL resize function has width first. So we we have to write uh, tuple self dot resize one and self dot resize zero. So this is what we have to do. And let's close this one. And uh, then you can also use some kind of resampling. So resampling resample so you can use a resample parameter uh, of um, uh, PIL and you can say uh, we use bilinear resampling h dot bilinear and let's save this okay so this is what we got and we can then we converted the image to a numpy array and then we have augmented image so just write augmented self dot aug and inside this your image is image and uh, then your final image becomes augmented and then you have image okay so we have this and now uh, you need to transpose it to channel first so image equal to np dot transpose image comma two zero one so channel first dot as type and p dot float 32 okay and then we return the dictionary so return so names are important what name you choose so we are returning images is even if it's one image but that's because of the model that's how we are going to use it in the model so torch dot tensor image and d type is torch dot float okay and similarly we have uh, targets so we can just return targets targets torch dot long so what are targets targets are also numpy arrays and we will come to that and we will see that how we uh, define these targets so this becomes our uh, classification data set classification data set and so far so good it looks fine uh, I don't see any kind of problem here so let's see how is it different from the Keras one so when I look at the Keras tutorial um, here is the encode single sample so one image so they're reading the image they're converting it to grayscale and uh, then float 32 which is fine uh, they're resizing it uh, the image height and width is also different than what we are using and then transposing the image because we want the time dimension to cross correspond with the width of the image so we are not doing that and there is a very good reason why we are not doing that we are using the image as it is so we are not transposing and transposing the image and then you can forget about the label for now so why we are not doing this uh, we will see that when we build our model so first of all so so we got this and now what we can do is we can um, try to create a simple training file and see a few things there so train.py so inside train.py we don't have uh, uh, we don't have a lot of things yet right so let's let's import a few things uh, we only have the classification data data set import glob um, for the files then you import torch import torch uh, import numpy as np we also import a few things from scikit-learn so from sklearn import pre-processing from sklearn import model selection and at some point if you want to calculate the metrics then uh, maybe you want to calculate the accuracy so from sklearn import metrics so we have these things and now uh, we have also created some files on our own import config and import dataset okay so we have these things and now um, we will create a function called run training so 
what you can do is you can also grab all the uh, png files and create a csv but uh, in this video i'm not doing that but if i have to uh, build a model i would prefer doing that and making the folds beforehand but here i'm not doing it so we have image files now image files is uh, glob dot glob so this is scanning through all the files in a given folder with a given extension so you can just write glob dot glob and inside that you have a path name so here path name will be uh, we already have the path name um, so os dot path dot join and inside this we have config dot data directory comma star dot png so all the png files uh, are my image files and then we have targets orig original targets so my original target this is very important so look what i'm doing here x dot split uh, and i split and i take the last element okay and then i take all the characters till the last fourth element for x in uh, image files so let's say so image files is a list and this list has um, path to the files so you have something slash something slash whatever and then um, dot png okay so the first part split is splitting by uh, this uh, slash and taking the last element so this is the last element and taking all but the last four characters in the end gives us this so this becomes my target so this will be my original targets so now what we do is uh, these targets are strings so we create another list of list c for uh, c in x for x in targets original okay so now if your if your target was a b c d e it becomes a list of targets a b c like this which is inside another list so it's a list of lists so now if you look at the images you will see that all the targets are of the same size 5 uh, but let's not go there now so this becomes a list of lists and now what we have is uh, we will flatten it so targets underscore flat so which is c for c list in targets for c in um, c for c list in targets for c in c list so this is going to give you a flat targets so you you had a list of list of targets now you're getting a flat list of targets um, and then we have label encoder so pre-processing dot label encoder label encoder not binarizer and we fit label encoder on our targets flat okay so we have a few things now i mean you can try to print uh, targets try to print unique target is underscore flat and p dot unique targets underscore flat and let's see in our terminal so python train.py obviously it's not going to run anything because we don't have the main function and then run training okay so now you see like you have the unique targets and you also have the list of list of targets um, and we fit our pro uh, label encoder on the flat targets 
so now we we have the flat targets and now what we want to do is we want to create encoded targets targets encoded will be list of uh, label encoder dot transform x for x in uh, targets okay so the list of list of targets you are transforming each and every list inside that list and then we can convert it to a numpy array easily encoder equal to np dot array and here you have targets encoded and we are going to do one more thing we are going to add one to it so your label encoder is encoding from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the number of labels and um, then we are adding 1 to it because 0 we want to keep for unknown um, so now uh, instead of printing so we can print targets encoded and we can also print one more thing which is label encoder dot classes underscore let's see how many classes we have um, okay so we are getting uh, this array uh, with the different classes and we also have we have 19 classes okay so we don't have a lot of different classes we just have 19 and now what you can do is we can try to split this so we have train images we have test images uh, train targets test targets uh, train underscore orange targets and test underscore orange targets this will be model selection dot train test split and see how big this line is and i'll show you the magic after this uh, image files comma uh, target encoded comma target orange comma test size is equal to 0 0.1 random state equal to 42 okay now i save this and boom everything has been formatted okay so we got everything now what we want to do is we want to create uh, training and test data loaders so which is also very simple so our train data set is uh, data set dot classification data set and inside that i have image underscore paths which is same as train paths train images and targets is same as train underscore targets and resize is config dot img underscore height <coughs> sorry config dot img and image underscore width so we are taking height first in this one and this also saves it fine okay we got train data set and similarly we have uh, valid data set or test data set so we are using test um, in this video so let's just call it test um, then you have test loader uh, tr train loader which is torch.utils dot data dot data loader uh, and inside this you have train data set and you have other things like batch size so batch size is config dot batch size then you have uh, num workers so config that also we saved in config config dot num workers then you have shuffle to true because it's training so we can we can have shuffle to true 
um, so we got this train loader and here uh, we will have our test loader and in test loader we don't need shuffle to true okay so we we got everything now or we can write one more thing so it looks the same shuffle equal to false okay so uh, we got everything and now we can uh, create our model so now we will define the model model equal to but we don't have the model yet so that's the problem right so we need to create a model uh, but first i will also show you how the images from this classification data set loader look like so which is also quite simple and easy so let's copy everything and here i will go here and create a new directory notebooks maybe uh, maybe just let's just go into source and create a new notebook and call it view data something like this okay so let's copy everything and here also let's copy everything till train data set so let's adjust the indentation okay so now it's giving me everything it's also printing some stuff which means i should remove it from here um and here i have train underscore data set and i'm i can access any element let's say i'm accessing zero i need a few more things uh import matplotlib percent matplotlib inline okay so this is my image now so inside images uh, images and then i can transpose it to channel last um so what was it i think uh two one zero okay uh okay let's do it later so this is my np image okay uh, so the numpy image okay so i also need to add this numpy to it and this is how it looks like and its shape is should be yeah channel first and then you have the height and then you have the width so 375 300 and now we need to make the channel uh, to to the end and that means we have to transpose the image so uh, um np dot transpose np image and here you specify how you want to transpose it back so you can take a look at your uh, data loader what did you do there and uh, you have to do the inverse of it it's pretty pretty simple and that's just one comma two comma zero and let's check the shape of this so you now have height, width, and channels, and you can easily plot it. I am sure. Okay, something bad has happened. Invalid shape three comma for image data. So something is wrong. And let me take a look. What is wrong here? Everything looks okay. okay. No shape. You don't need the shape, obviously. So. Uh, this is your image now so you can also multiply it by 255 and get rid of the warning clipping in uh, okay leave it anyways so you this is your image so it seems like some values are not in the range but it's okay um, and you can you can just change it to 199 so you have a different image so 
you, now you see like all these are capture images so now we have to build a model to uh, try to identify the capture here so we'll go back to our uh, vs code and try to create a model now so um, model here is very important should we create the model first or should we, should we just do something else first maybe let's create the training and evaluation function the, um, take the simple things first engine.py so here um, import tkdm as tkdm if you want uh, then you have torch and we can also import config so we got all these three things uh, and now we will define a train function and our train function should take model data loader and optimizer okay and we put the model in train mode so all this is has been done so many times define a final loss our tk is uh, tqdm data loader total is length of data loader and then for data in tk0 for k comma v in uh, data dot items for every batch what you do is you're going to put this uh, on uh, the device which is in use so data k is v dot two config dot device okay and then your model should return two things the first thing that your model should return should be uh, the predictions so predictions we're not going to use here and the second thing should be loss and then you uh, input all your uh, data to models so the variable names should be the same so this is one thing then you put uh, one more thing that we forgot is to zero grad the optimizer dot zero grad and then you do loss dot backward and um, optimizer dot step so see that i don't have a scheduler here because some schedulers need to be run after every batch some need to be run after some need to be stepped after only after um every epoch so we are going to use a different one and i'm just going to add this to fin loss plus equal to current loss dot item okay and return uh fin loss so the final loss divided by the length of the data loader so that's your final loss which is being returned and i copy the same thing create the evaluation function so now i need to put the model in eval mode you also need with torch.nocrad i'm not doing it so you do it on your own um fin preds uh fin preds maybe a list so here everything remains the same we don't need this so uh, batch spreads model lost or backward optimizer dot step is not required and uh, what we do here is um, we just append so fin preds dot append batch spreads so we have not converted to cpu or anything we have just appended it and we are returning the predictions to when we are in the evaluation function tqdm is not callable so from tqdm import tqdm okay um so we got everything here so now we have we have our data set file we have engine we have the training file but um, now we need the most important thing the model so let's go and take a look at the model now the model is also not very difficult to create so i mean files are not difficult to create right so now uh, we create a file called model.py so let's import torch the things that we need and um, 
we also need to import from torch import and then and then we define a model class so captcha model and inside this we have an dot module so it inherits from that and then we divide in it function self comma uh, number of characters so what are the maximum number of characters that you have and the super captcha model comma self dot in it okay and now we define some uh, we can we can write some kind of uh, convolutional model so which is pretty simple so just just go ahead and write whatever kind of convolutional model you want you have to be very careful otherwise things might not work so conf 2d and here i have i have uh, input channels output channels kernel size and strides and padding so uh, my input channels are 3, I say my output channel is 128 and uh, kernel size is 3,3 3, let's say and padding is 1,1 1, 1 on both sides. So this is my convolutional, the first convolutional uh, layer and now I will add a max pooling layer. So max pool underscore 1 and which is an n dot max pool. 2d and inside this i have kernel size so kernel size i can do um, 2 comma 2 that's it and then i can define another uh, couple of uh, layers so second convolutional layer and second max pool layer so now our, my input is 128 so max pooling is not changing the number of filters you have and uh, then uh, my i can define some kind of output filters so let's say 64 kernel size and padding remains the same so this is your uh, half a model okay so what you can do is you can start writing forward function and try to see uh, what your model is generating so it should take the same uh, name images and targets so whatever is coming from your data loader because we try to make it very general and um, your targets can also be none because when you have inference you don't have any targets so let's say your targets can also be none and this is giving me uh, some kind of uh, batch size channels height and width so in the Keras tutorial height and width has been exchanged but you don't really need to do that you just need to make your model a little bit different that's it and we will come to that and this is image dot size okay and let's say here you can print batch size channel height width okay and then you have your first layer so first layer what what we are going to do is we are also going to wrap this inside a, um, a rectified linear unit so that's that's the activation that we are going to use so from torch.nm import functional as f okay so here we have f.relu and inside this self.con1 and this takes x and now you can you can print the size print x dot size so always print the size you will know what's going on inside your network and then you here input should not be x it should be images and x uh, then you have the max pool layer so you apply the max pool layer uh, max pool 1 and x and then print x dot size okay and you repeat the same thing for conf 2 and instead of images here you have x and max pool 2 uh, return x comma none so we have to return the predictions and the uh, loss and now let's write a main function 
and see what what we have here so we can we can create our own uh data set right so let's say our captcha model uh, consists of 19 different characters so we had 19 previously so we're just specifying that and my image is uh, torch dot rand so random one three seventy five three hundred so that's the size we chose uh, from config and we can just have uh, C this is equal to CM so X comma I can just also say loss CM and um, then you have image and some kind of uh, target so target so what what is the size of the target that you with it, that we have it's uh, like if you have single target it's one cross five so torch dot you you have to do random integer here but you can also do rand uh, and uh, you can have any kind of random number so be, just, just that we are we are just checking it okay so we got everything and now we can try to this should be images uh we can try to run this file and see what happens so let's go to our terminal and python model.py so something something is not working okay so rand int is not working uh okay it needs high low high uh but expected one of uh int low int high tuple of int size okay uh int low int high and tuple of int size so let's say like this okay so now my when my image comes it's of the size 300 um, uh, 75 cross 300 and now here we here we have started printing our first thing uh, so after first convolution uh, the size remains the same then we have the max pooling which reduces the size in half uh, then after the second convolution the size remains the same as the previous one but after second um, uh, max pooling the size reduces in half so what do what do we see here the first one is the batch size which is one and 64 is the number of filters that you have 18 is the height and 75 is the width now so now what you want to do is you want to add a new layer and this layer will will be uh, some kind of rnn layer so that's what you want to add but before that you have to do a few things right so let's see well, let's see what you have to do now maybe we can we can just uh, take this one so i don't know if i can copy it uh but let's try so this is the size here no i cannot copy it so anyways uh let me see 164 1875 right so this is 164 18 and 75 so that's your uh, again your batch size filters width uh, sorry height and width so what we are going to do now is we are going to perform a kind of permutation not a kind of permutation but exactly permutation x dot permute and inside this we are going to uh, bring our uh, width column uh, sorry uh, so 75 is our the width of the image right so we are going to bring it at second position so when we permute it zero remains at zero so third index comes in the first position and first index goes to second position and second index goes to third position so here this will become 175 then you have um, 64 and 18 yeah so this thing this order has been changed now 
so now what we do is and why we are doing it because we want to look at the width of the image when we apply our rnn model so now we are going to we can we can also print the size so always print the size it's very useful um so now we are going to do is change the view so x dot view and i'm going to say uh, my view is my batch size so that's that's the number of samples i have in one batch and after that x dot size um one so which is 75 in our case and then minus one so just multiply other stuff and keep the size same okay <laughs> i hope it's not too bad uh let's see so we had it till here and then we exchanged the so 75 came to the second position 64 and 18 were shifted and now we have 75 1152 so what we can do now is we can we can probably try to add a another layer self dot linear so some kind of linear layer uh, and then dot linear and what was the size that you got 1152 so that becomes your input size so 1152 and uh, what are the number of features that you want to choose so you can choose anything you want maybe let's try 64 and we can also add a dropout dot dropout uh, 0.2 so you have to try different architectures you have to come up with something so x is self dot linear one x and dropout is not going to change the size so we can just add one and let's see what do you have now so 1152 to 64 it remains the same but i mean even previously you had you had what you needed to create your lstm model so we just we just uh, reduced the uh, number of uh, filters outputs so uh, you have 75 time steps and for each time step you have 1152 values so now you have 75 time steps and for each time step you have 64 values so now we can add a lstm or a groove model so let's add a groove model instead uh, so you can also add lstm that's going to work fine as well so i take 64 inputs 32 outputs output filters and uh, we will use a bi-directional groove and um we will use the number of layers to two so it's a uh, it's two layered group so output of one goes to the second one and we can also use dropout 0.25 so we got our groove model and in the end you can have a output so you can you can keep on experimenting with different kinds of groove so uh groove or lstm whatever or gru i like to call it groove uh so self dot groove and here you have your x okay so it's going to return uh three different things two different things so the second one is tuple so go take a look at the documentation if you don't know that and okay so i have this self dot output and everything works fine so we had 32 but since it's bidirectional it's returning 64 uh, so I can just add a linear layer and 64 and return the number of characters plus one plus one why plus one because we have an unknown oh we have to add it right so x is um, self dot uh, output x and you print the size again in the end okay so now you have 20 
outputs so for each timestamp so now we have 75 different timestamps and um, uh, at each timestamp it's returning me a vector of size 20 so that's all the all the different kinds of uh, characters or alphabets that we have in our uh, in our data set so um, now we have to also return the loss if we have targets so if targets is not none in this case return the loss and that's where things become a bit interesting so we cannot use we can we can use different kinds of loss maybe you can use some kind of multi label loss but what if you have captcha images in which you have like in some you can have four characters and some you can have 10 characters and it's a sequence so you should use a loss function which makes sense with sequences and one of the loss functions like that is ctc loss so connectionist temporal classification so you can you can read about it uh, on this blog so it was a paper in um, distal uh so just read about it so what it does is like um you can identify different words at different letters at different positions so uh like like if when you have a captcha image let let me show you something maybe so for um so the first character here is four then you have d and you have two two and then m so four can be identified probably in the beginning uh, beginning two and towards the end uh, where where the character four ends and also in the middle right so and at certain positions you don't have any character to be predicted so that's why we have the unknown and that's why we use the, this kind of sequence uh, modeling so this is particularly useful when you have sequence data like even with audio data or uh, you can have uh, handwritten character recognition so these kind of things um, but if you if you want to go into detail and read that then take a look it's it's a bit difficult uh, to uh, like it was a bit difficult for me to implement this in uh, PyTorch not to implement but to use this in PyTorch it's not straightforward so first of all what you need to keep in mind is uh, CTC loss has been implemented in PyTorch and you can use it directly but it takes log softmax so log softmax values so you can do f dot log underscore softmax then x which is your output and x is to 0 1 2 2 is the last one where you have all the classes and then you have to specify two things like uh, called length of input and length of output. So input length will be um, let's say torch dot full, and you specify input length will have the same size as the batch size, obviously, and uh, you will fill this with. Uh, log softmax values dot size to uh, sorry log softmax values dot size two yeah yeah it should be two uh, but there is one more thing before that so you have to permute it again so x dot permute one zero two so your batch size will go to the middle your timestamp time steps will be the first and your values will be the last and that's how ctc loss expects uh, it to be so you got log softmax values now your fill value is two size two which is incorrect i think uh, I think it should be zero and then you specify a d type so d type will can be torch dot in dot torch dot long so d type torch dot 32 so what's happening here 
uh, we will print it and then uh, it will be much clearer and for our case um, we can we can have the output lens in the same way and in our our case is a little bit easy or target lens let's call it target lens and uh, batch size remains the same and fill value sh can be uh, the size of the targets which is the same in our case it's five right so like this um, so we have created this and now we can calculate the loss so losses and dot ctc loss and here you have to specify a few things so blank is zero so if you have zero it means blank and we shifted everything by one in the training file and here it takes uh, log softmax values okay and targets input lens and target lens so we got all this all these things target lens and now you can return x comma loss so the best thing to see what's happening here would be to just print this so print target lens and print input lens so this you have to remember you have to remember that the timestamps will go first then you have the batches then you have the values and then you also need to take the log softmax instead of normal softmax <laughs> yeah and let's see clear okay so my input is a tensor 75 and output is um sorry target input length is tensor of size one and which has 75 in it and output is uh, size five so output can have different sizes input is going to have all 75 so because we have a batch size of one let let me increase the batch size um can say probably we can say five okay so now let's see what happens so now our batch size is five so for the first batch there are 75 predicted values and tar in target we have five predicted values and so, so similarly for the second one you have 75 predicted values in the input and five predicted values in the target so th this can be different it depends on your problem and then you then you don't have to calculate it then you won't be able to calculate it inside uh, the model you probably have to move it outside loss calculation you have to probably move it outside the model probably so this is our model and now uh, what we do is we go back to our training file and initialize the model so from model import uh, captcha model and import engine okay and here we have um, here we can add captcha model num cares is length of uh, label encoder dot classes underscore so you got that and now we send the model to device config dot device okay and now we, we can start training the model so before we train we need optimizer let's say uh, we, we can choose any kind of optimizer you want we can probably try with adam torch dot Adam use all the parameters of the model and our learning rate to three e minus four. 
and we can also add some kind of scheduler reduce alert on plateau where we have optimizer a uh, factor of 0 0.8 patience 5 verbos true so you can play around with different ones if you want and we can do for a uh config range config dot epox here we can define train loss so train loss will be engine dot train function and inside that takes model train uh, loader <coughs> and optimizer and similarly we have um, valid preds comma valid loss eval function and that doesn't take any kind of optimizer okay so we have everything now and we can probably try to train our model and see what if it's even training so let's clear this and python train.py let's see okay tk0 is not defined so zero i have the habit of writing tk0 okay and then see what happens now capture model object has no attribute eval function model dot eval function okay so there is a typo um and also we are printing a lot of things that we don't need anymore so let's hide them all and try it again So now it seems to be training okay uh, it went out of memory it shouldn't have been out of shouldn't go out of memory let me try it on a different GPU no, it really doesn't like it so maybe i can use with torch dot no grad right uh, that context so let's see engine <clears throat> let's hope it trains so i have a lot of things running at the moment maybe that's why it's running out of memory Okay, so it seems to be running fine, right? So let's print some stuff. So print epoch. Okay, and what we can print? Train loss. And we can print valid loss. So train underscore loss and valid underscore loss. So let's see what's happening. So seems to be doing quite well. It's learning. Uh, it's a bit slow, but it is learning. So we can let it run or we can stop it and go to the next step. 
which is the last step i know this video has been a little bit longer than i expected it to be but there's just way too many things in this one and uh yeah you have to you have to you have to be very patient with this you have to have a lot of patience with this kind of model so now uh, what we are predicting is at every step we are predicting so when, whenever we are making prediction we are predicting 75 values in in this given case we are predicting 75 values for each image and at every 75 values we are predicting a label so label can be anything between 0 and 20 inclusive of 20 i think 0 and 19 and then we extended it so 0 and uh, 20 so no we had 19 characters before okay anyways so 0 is our unknown so we can represent unknown by something so let's represent unknown by this degree sign okay so this is our unknown then probably it's uh, giving me 6666 six, 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 dd 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 D, 7 7 8 h something like this and i can also have unknowns in the middle maybe here was not able to predict anything maybe here so you you get something like this and the size of this thing this string is 75 so first thing first thing that you need to do is to remove these things the unknown uh, labels and then you can also reduce uh, these um, you can say like if it's repeated then we take only one occurrence which is very bad because that's going to give you a quite bad accuracy but anyways let's take a look at uh, this how to decode the predictions so we can create a function called decode predictions inside this you take the takes the predictions uh, from from the validation set or anything and the label encoder which is let's just call it encoder so the first thing that you do is you do preds dot permute and permute it back to one zero two so you have the batch size first then you have the timestamps and then you have the uh, predictions and then you can do a softmax on this threads second index axis and then you can do an argmax and here you have threads comma two again uh, and you can convert it to a numpy array threads dot detach dot cpu dot numpy and now you have i can create a list called captcha predictions and uh, you have here for j in range so i'm doing it in a very crude way you can probably do much better than me so i'm going through each and every batch uh, um, each and every image in a given batch and for that i'm creating a temporary list and then i'm going through each and every value so for k in preds so which value was predicted j comma all um sorry and then i'm subtracting minus one from that value because we had added minus one to the label which was extra so we need to subtract it so now if i say if k equals minus one then just choose a unknown character which is not in your list of characters so temp dot append you can you can append anything you want so here i will just append this degree symbol else temp uh, else you have some kind of um, real value so temp dot append and here you can append encoder dot inverse transform and create a list and the list will consist of only one value so k 
and take the zeroth element of the list so yeah if it's a little bit faster then i'm sorry we have to move a little bit fast so join and temp and uh, here we can we can just have we can just open to our capture predictions dot append and here you just open tp the predictions that you have created temp predictions and you return capture predictions so this is this is some kind of decode function that we have just written probably it's not very good but it can try to decode something right and uh, we can see some some stuff so let's see some stuff so we have the valid preds we have the valid loss so i will create a new list valid cap preds okay and i will go through each and every item in valid uh preds so my valid preds is a list of lists right so i will say current preds is decode predictions so um and then i have mm, inside this i have valid Preds, comma, label encoder. Okay, and then I can extend uh, valid cap preds dot extend current preds. So I can write something like this. And in the beginning, we also created a test or is target. So train or is targets we don't need. So we created test or is targets. So let's try and see. Um, so we have valid cap preds now that's giving me all the capture predictions. So this should be VP instead. And we create a zip of test or is targets and valid cap preds. And we print sum of it i say between 6 and 10 let's print only for five values okay and let's train the model now and see what happens so the model is training and it should print something okay now yeah so now see that you have like 75 of uh, these things coming in <laughs> right uh, so it would be a little bit hard to see but we can we can nevertheless see a lot of it anyways so let's continue maybe we can use pprint from pprint and let's say let's see we should print it better i hope okay so now at least we can see a few things better so it's training i will let it train and uh, let's see how long it takes so you see like it reached 25 epochs and it's not predicting anything but after that it starts to to uh, predict stuff so you have to be really patient and you have to wait a lot so anyways um, there are a few more things that you have to do uh, in this so you have to you have to get rid of this unknown characters and you have to find a way uh, to enhance your predictions so um, uh, we can also let it train for some more time and see uh, if we are predicting any good values. So you can see the loss has reached quite low, but we are not predicting anything good. So something is wrong. Maybe something is wrong in the transformation somewhere. So inverse transform K 
looks good it's still training loss is quite low but uh, yeah seems like the predictions are not very good so something is definitely wrong somewhere we need to check that so yeah we have made a big blunder instead of train uh, test loader we have used train loader so let's fix that and that's why it was learning so good <laughs> um, and now we stop it and try to train it again <laughs> I hope this works now so now it has been training for a while so it's more than 100 epochs so the training is similar to last time it's going to take some time but um, to, to when it starts to learn something but you see like the loss is quite low now obviously not like last time when we were overfitting um but now let's see the prediction so you have 4 fp 5 6 and here it's at every time step it's generating some kind of prediction value so 4 uh, then it doesn't generate for a long time then you have 4 fp 5 and then g so similarly you have d66 cn d66 then you have a lot of these so at different time steps it's generating c again and again and again and then you have n and the similar thing happens here when you have x x coming together for the first x and then you have a lot of space and then you have the second x which is just once so you have to write some kind of algorithm so um, there are there are some ctc decode libraries that you can use uh, or some kind of search you have to build some kind of search to figure out what is the best um, way to extract from uh, this data here so that's all for today's video i know it has been a long a long video but uh there was a lot of content in it and i hope you like that content and if you do like that content press on the like button and do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share it with others and uh you can also buy my book and i'm also um, in process of writing a new book called approaching almost any nlp problem which is going to be a really very extensive book so let's see how that goes later and uh, thank you very much and have a good week ahead have a good day bye bye